Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to set up the Blink Mini 2 smart security camera, which was just launched in March of 2024. It's an update from previous Blink Mini cameras in that this can be placed both indoors or outdoors, as well as it has updated night vision with a larger LED spotlight, a wider viewing angle, and it has better picture quality. It's got day and night vision, two-way audio communication, as well as motion detection and person detection. The first thing we need to do to get this set up is download the Blink app. So if you haven't done that already, download the Blink app like we've got right here, set up a username and password, and then log in. We're just gonna open up the app so we've got it open while we're setting it up. The next thing that we need to do is plug this in. So you've got a power adapter cord that comes with it. You just plug it right into the back of the Blink camera right here, and then that will allow you to set this up and power it up. So the Blink Mini 2 camera is powered by an actual power cable and connector versus some other Blink cameras actually use batteries. So now we're going to click in the app once we've opened it up, this top button right here, this plus symbol. So I click on the plus symbol and now it's going to allow us to add a device. I am setting up a Blink Mini camera, so I'm going to click this option right here. Now it says capture the QR code printed on the device in the quick start guide or enter the device serial number manually. So here, all I need to do is take the QR code that is on the back of this. I can't show it to you while I'm setting it up, but right here on the back, there's a QR code. Just scan that with your phone and then your Blink Mini will start popping up in the app. Now they also have a serial number that is on the box and or in the manual. So you can use that as well. Once we scan the QR code, this is the next screen that pops up. Now here I can add it to my other Blink systems, but I'm just going to click create a new system and click continue here. Now we can name this and I'm just going to call this Blink Mini 2. Now I'm going to click continue. Discover device. Plug in your device and wait for the lights to display. We need to have a blinking blue light and a steady green light, which we have right now. So we can click discover device. Blink wants to join the Wi-Fi network. Click join. Here we select our Wi-Fi network and then we're going to enter the password. Once we've entered the password, click join. It updated the firmware and now our Blink Mini 2 camera has been added to the Blink Mini system. We're going to click done. Welcome to your Blink Plus plan free trial. Your 30 day free trial has been activated and covers all devices in this account. So we're going to scroll through this and see what else we can look at here. It says person detection, know when a person is detected with embedded computer vision for next level peace of mind. To use person detection, check out the motion settings in camera settings. Now it says get longer live view with mini and wired floodlight camera. Experience up to 90 minutes of continuous live view per session to protect whatever matters most in your home. We're going to scroll through that and it says never miss a moment. Access unlimited cloud video. Share to your, save and share to your video so you can save these to your phone or share them. See what's happening between the events. Now we're going to click done. Tap on the play button to access live view for this camera. We're going to click next. Tap the more button to take a photo, enable motion detection, or access your camera settings. We'll click next. And now we've got our camera right here. It says tap arm to activate motion detection. Click next there. Tap on clips to view recorded videos and motion events. We'll click finish. Now our Blink Mini 2 smart security camera has been set up. And if I wanna watch the live footage of this, I just click right here and it's going to show me the live view and footage. You can see me waving in the background there on the live view and there's not much of a delay at all, if any. Now, one thing that's unique about the Blink Mini 2 camera is that it has a much brighter LED spotlight. So I can click to turn that on in the app and you can see it is very bright and will illuminate the room both during day and night for better picture quality. 
I can turn that off if I want, but I can also set that up so that it will turn on and off automatically when motion is detected. I can save my footage right here and then it will save that in the app and I could view that later and or send it to myself. I could unmute this and then I would have two-way communication so I could talk as well as listen to what's going on. And then here I can click more and I'm gonna be able to go into my device settings or turn on the extended live view. Now up at the top here, if I click on this, that's going to allow me to have the full screen and I've just got it uh, in the horizontal orientation, but you could change this however you want. And then you can scroll to zoom in and out and do whatever you need to there. And then when you click on it, you also have the controls for turning on or off those LED lights right here, as well as you can mute or unmute. And if you wanna get out of this, you just click right there and that's going to live view and then click again. I can click close and it takes me back to the home screen. Now that we're back at the home screen, if I click here in this little three dots, I can choose some of the quick settings. I can have a snooze notification. I can turn the motion detection on or off. I can refresh the thumbnail. So I'm going to do that right now. And that means it's just going to take a picture of whatever it's looking at right now. And then I can go in here and turn the light on or the light off if I want to. But what we wanna take a look at is the specific device settings for this Blink Mini 2. So I click right there and now it's got our general settings. I'm not gonna go into that, but you can change the device name, which I have already done. But I'm gonna start off with the motion settings here. So here you can turn motion detection on or off and you can click on motion recording types. This is what I think is really cool is that you can differentiate between all motion or person detection. This uses that computer vision to determine when a person is on the camera, and then it will alert you when a person is detected rather than, let's say, leaves blowing in the wind or a car going by. So we'll scroll back here, and then we can change our motion sensitivity from one to 10. So we can go all the way down here and all the way up to nine, so no 10, but we'll leave it right at five. Then you can customize your motion zones. So here you can click these to be alerted only when motion is detected in this center. But you could make this motion zone however you want it. So maybe I only want these three squares down here, or maybe I want some up here at the top and to be alerted when motion is detected there. So it's a really easy way to detect motion. Now, what's neat about this is you also have privacy zones. So here in a privacy zone, it says tap and drag on the image to create up to two privacy zones. And a privacy zone does not detect motion and does not record video. So if you've got motion in this privacy zone um, down here, then you would not have any kind of recording or motion detection when you go in there. Some people want that and other people just wanna use the active activity zones. So we'll go back here and we'll just click done with our uh, activity zones and that should take us back to our settings and then we can change those more if we want. We've got our re-trigger time. So this adjusts the time after a motion event during which a camera will not detect motion. So you can set this from 10 seconds all the way up to a minute if you're getting a lot of re-triggers. I'm gonna leave that at 10 seconds and then I'm going to click back. Now here you've got your video and photo settings. So I'm gonna click on this and you can change your motion clip length. We've got it at 10 seconds now, but I can go all the way up to 30 seconds. Then you've got your video quality. I recommend turning this up as long as you've got the bandwidth for it because this is not battery powered. This is plugged in. So you don't need to worry about battery power or running that down. If you've got the bandwidth for it, turn it all the way up to best quality video. Now we've got a setting here to end the clip early if motion stops, I'll leave that off. And then you can flip the video so if you end up mounting this upside down, you can flip that so it looks like it's right side up. You can have the night vision so that it'll automatically turn on or have it off or have it on. In auto mode, the LED will turn on when visible light is low, such as at night. So I think that's a good setting to leave it on. And then you've got the IR intensity. So sometimes you may actually need to adjust this down if you've got something that will reflect it a lot. I'm not gonna have that issue, so I could leave it on medium or I could go all the way up to high and get the most out of that IR illumination. Here it says take a photo once per hour when enabled and armed. And that's just gonna show you what's a timeline of what's happening over one hour. So we're going to click back out of this and we will click on the next settings, which we've got our audio settings here. You can adjust the speaker volume here. So we'll click back on that. And then you've got your lighting settings uh, for motion activation, 
light brightness, timeout after manual activation, or motion activation. Now, one thing I think that's important to note when you've got an outdoor camera that has an LED light on it, I do think that there is a deterrent effect when you've got the light automatically going on when motion is detected. So it'll automatically illuminate your area so you're gonna be able to see better, but it also lets people know outdoors that they are potentially being recorded and or they are at least under light and motion has been detected by either a camera or a motion activated light or someone inside. So I think it's nice to leave that deterrent setting of having the lighting on when possible. Here you can go to your privacy settings and then you can also adjust these. So you've got those privacy zones, which we showed you earlier. And then it says video recording. If you want to disable video recording, you can do that. And you can also disable audio streaming. So that is pretty much all we've got for the Blink Mini 2. Thank you for watching this video on how to set up your Blink Mini 2 smart security camera. This is a neat update in 2024 from previous generations of Blink. And the thing that I like about it most is that this camera can now be placed indoors or out, where previous generations of the Blink Mini camera were really not designed to be placed outdoors. You can see the housing on this is better to be water resistant and weather resistant, and it should hold up outdoors. Now, the other updates also include that you've got the better LED spotlight, you've got a better camera, you've got the person detection, as well as you've got a wider field of view. So thanks for watching this video on how to set up your Blink Mini 2 smart security camera.